It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament where we are changing the narrative. For the, the whole, this whole series of um, this war of mine, it's kind of been, um, started out with Tater, two buddies, buddies started dying off, Dick, Desi died off, Dick held on through a series of people who came in. I kind of lost track in, in like just which body parts belong to which body. Um, then Dick died off, and then Tater is still hanging on, doing all right. Took a crash. Tater decided to ditch out on the whole thing. So now we have no none of the original cast of this War of Mine, which um, in the actual game that would stop the game. But we're going to continue anyway with um, Kaz and Cat and Smudge and anyone else who might come by and um, join the happy house and see what kind of new story we can have, what sort of like epilogue, is it going to be just an epilogue where they like slowly die off after Cater leaves them or or is it good, or are they going to survive or are they're going to die but someone else who comes along going to survive, something's going to happen and that's what we're going to play to find out right now. Really nice beginning to the turn, we got this relatively peaceful thing, we're not going to have to deal with night raids. Um, now yeah, we just get to skip it. So I'm going to assume you don't even need to have a guard. Maybe, I don't know how you would know it was peaceful ahead of time, but somehow you know. So maybe you just have this, this uh, gut feeling. So what are we looking at here? We got some illness problems, some fatigue problems, um, some misery problems. Be nice to be able to repair that guitar because you might be able to raise the misery with the guitar. They also are hungry, and how close are we? Yeah, we're about to have this thing come up, so it'd be nice if we got some vegetables to fill that up. And yeah, I'm gonna try not to talk too much about decision making on the thing. Uh, so I'm gonna come back and let you know what they've done. All right, Smudge really wanted to repair the guitar in hopes that Cal would play him a song. Um, Cal is like, no, we need to, uh, we need to get some vegetables ASAP. Uh, because otherwise you're going to die due to misery or something's going to happen to you. So they're going to work together. They're going to hope that they can get something in this furniture. Um, Smudge is going to have two actions. Uh, Kaz and Cat only has one. So they have to. They have no shovel. So they're going to dig through this. Nothing there. I don't think there ever is. Let's see what there is in the furniture. We're hoping for some vegetables. No vegetables. So hopefully we can get some food tonight. But there are some good things there, you know, it's not, not that bad. Got some components, right? The destruction is unimaginable. It's amazing the other part still stands. Here goes Flush, or not, Flush. <laughs> uh, um, here goes Smudge into the ruined block of flats. Here we go. Stairs down, look for another way. Return three exploration cards or raise the noise by three and roll for noise. Um. He's gonna return the cards. He's feeling pretty desperate though. He's really gotta find something to help his misery. That's really important because if the A result happens, um, eh, I'm not gonna go through that. He's got a lot of things that could kill him coming up right now. Jam door, there is a jam door. So you can return in one exploration card, raise the noise by three and roll for noise. There's a lot of those, raise the noise by three. Um, I think can you, if there is, you may resolve this card. I think he's going to place it here right now, and not worry about it. So he can come back to this jam door and look and break it open. Reality impact. When we entered the room, we quickly realized that thirty pairs of small frightened eyes were staring at us. The children waited in silence, wondering what we would do. It seems they have learned to behave quietly in such situations. However, in the room next door, we could hear children crying along with the sound of someone trying to calm them. The woman who was with them looked at us and apparently decided that there was some, nothing to be afraid of. Rather than hesitating, she came closer with confidence in her step. With this same self-assurance, she starts negotiating with us. This is a children's home. Their parents either died or abandoned them. We stayed here to take care of them. What else could we do? Please just leave. Don't hurt us. They didn't do anything. So... Smudge is either going to leave them alone, he could try helping them, or we see you've got food. We'll take some. Move aside. Ooh. So we could try to take their food. So here's the thing. 
you got to know about Smudge. One thing you got to know about Smudge is he's very hungry. Hunger of two. That's, you know, but even worse is she's very hungry and his character, who he's puppeting, really cares about hunger. That's what makes him uh, become more miserable if he sees someone else hungry. But more importantly, what you got to know about Smudge is Smudge loves children, okay? Smudge is a mall Santa. Smudge has, like, some issues with his... Um, his upraising, upraising, and I think that makes him, like, really sympathize with children. Oh, shoot, I lost the page number I was on. Okay, it was one, I, I, I'll, I'll reconstruct it. I'll get back to the page number, and then he's going to help the kids. I mean, Smudge has got to help the kids. I think we've tried everything to get these children to, to evacuate it, to help them leave the country. Once a week, I go to aid organizations. They give us some food and water, but that's it. How long can these children wait? What future can they expect here under siege? She asked us with tears in her eyes, while pointing a finger at a small, sad girl. So, Smudge could be like, well, I'll have to wait for this to end. Good luck. Or he can try to see some foreign media and try to get them to come there because he knows where he can find them. I like to believe that Smudge knows where to find the foreign media. Let's go see what that's about. I felt that it's my duty to help the kids from the children's home. I decided that one night I'll go to the hotel housing the foreign reporters and ask them to come here and make a report about children under siege. Maybe it'll push some high-ranking official into evacuating these poor things. Kids who have done no one any harm, even though there's little chance of the reporters coming, it's still worth a shot. Okay, so I gotta write down excursion to journalist 952 on a blank token and place in the findings pile. I'm actually just gonna write on a notebook. Um, and then, okay, so one character can spend the night going to the journalist hotel. If the character survives, we'll return to the shelter at the beginning. Then, okay, so it's basically they go to a special mission to do the journalist. Okay, so hopefully Smudge survives so he can be the one to do that. So 952. So I guess it's not pressing to go see the journalists. You, or maybe just doesn't have time. So you can go here. Okay, so you can return one exploration card or roll for noise to choose one finding from the special findings chart. Yes, we will do that. We will return a special thing and we're gonna get a vegetable. Come here, vegetable. Vegetable. All right. Open space. There is no open space. Draw this. A door, peek through the keyhole or raise the noise by one. I think we'll just raise the noise by one and keep going. Reality impact! When we heard a noise on the lower floors, we carefully walked up to the railing and looked down the stairwell. Three men were hitting a young woman and from time to time her weak body bounced off the railings. We went down the staircase unseen by anyone. One of the men broke down the door to the abandoned apartment, shoved the victim inside, and the rest followed them. Three big men disappeared in the apartment, but the women, woman's cries and shouts and the shouts of her attackers resound through the entire block of apartments. We have to help her. We've got no chance. It's best not to interfere. Okay, which do we do? I think Smudge is kind of on a helping kick. I think he's kind of got to help her. Ah, yeah, I, his path is set. He's a hero. He's our hero. Smudge is our hero. We had to act quickly and use the element of surprise. Men, drunk and emboldened by the chaos of the war, had the worst of intentions towards the women. The woman. Um, and probably towards other women, too. So, he gets a, we get a backstab, and if we kill one of them, the others were, are going to run away. So, Smudge is going to just shoot them before they can do anything. They all have knives. So, here's Smudge's shot. And he has a prowess of two. That's really nice. So that, I don't know what that means. Let's find out what that means and then we'll do some more excited, exciting dice rolling. This means nothing for Smudge, but if an enemy gets this, then they run out of ammo. Um, okay, so here we go again. This is his first reroll. He has one more after this. That He could trust fate right now, but he's not going to. He wants to, he wants to get a kill. There we go. Now I think, I think that means that he does three wounds to one guy, which would kill him, right? I think that's what it means. Yeah, yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. What a brave hero. He shot him from behind, and then the others got scared and ran away. So here's what happens next. She's still crying and trembling, but she's thanking 
uh, me. We, I walk her back to her shelter a few streets away. She, and then you just get some stuff. I'm assuming she gives it to you, except for the knife. So we get a knife because we killed a guy with a knife and some moonshine. Moonshine will help with the misery. Oh, we might just get through this yet. Thanks to Smudge. I feel good about that. That could have gone really bad. And Smudge is, is really trying to be helpful. He doesn't need to. He's in dire straits. It's easy to be helpful when you have a lot. But when you are, when you're in this kind of situation that Smudge is in and you still try to, you go out of your way to try to help somebody, that, that says something. Okay, so we have to return two exploration cards or raise the noise by one to search the pantry. We're just going to raise the noise by one. He's taking a little bit of a risk here, but doesn't have those vegetables yet. All right. No problem. The world is happy about smudge. Yeah, so we got the pantry, more raw food, no vegetables, and more moonshine. And we could get vegetables. One, that's nothing. Okay, so raw food, moonshine, and we'll see what the next thing is. Hideout, that's not gonna do anything. So he could, oh, he could have returned this and raised it. Yeah, he's not gonna, he's not gonna risk it. So not only, does he have to keep himself alive now? He's got to keep those kids alive. Because there should be a counter here that's that has the information. So Cat doesn't know anything about them until he comes back and is like, oh, we gotta to go to the hotel. So it's important that he gets back for their sake as well as his own. So let's move on. Fortunately, Flood uh, Smudge had to leave one of the moonshines behind, but he drank one, or two of the moonshines behind. I think how many moonshines did we get? I don't know. He drank one, which made him very tired, but um, yeah, he that way it could carry more back. Um, no bandages, no medicine. That's too bad. And not enough vegetables to get us over the hump there. So, but we do have some food to eat now. Unfortunately, we're going to raise our misery by two. Yeah, it's not much for it unless fate has something to say. Let's see what's going to happen with fate. Raise the illness of all ill characters who did not take any meds or herbal meds by one. So that'll be smudge. Uh, discard herbal med tokens from all characters. Okay. Cold minus board ups equals four or more. It does. Raise the illness of three chosen characters by one. So everyone's three illness. Resolve weight tokens. Resolve spirit. So your misery is going to go up to three again. He would have died right then or left the game if he hadn't drank that moonshine. So that's really nice. Um, her A is no effect. Okay, so now, unfortunately, we have to resolve this thing. That's what this is going to say to do. Does it say anything else? Resolve the top objective card. See the reward if you not from the game. And that is going to mean we didn't help them. And we are really broken by not helping them. And this, whoop, and that, yeah, that really hurts Smudge most of all, because you we we've, we've learned today, I think, that Smudge has a very big heart. Fortunately, that big heart is not enough to keep him in this game, though he will stay in the tournament. Smudge is in the enviable position of only having negative 38 points, so he's going to add negative 400 to that, negative 438. He's still doing better than quite a lot of people on the board there. So, you know, Smudge can feel good about that, and he brought a lot of light. He saved someone from a potential rape. Uh, maybe someone will fulfill his um, quest to save those children or draw at least draw media attention to their plight. Overall, I'd say even though he's failed out of this game, he's been successful in my eyes. And I think that's what counts, really. Um, well, not that he's been successful in my eyes, but that he, he could be proud of himself, I think. And I think he... he you know, all these imaginary people are going to have better lives because they met Smudge. And if he's not going to be heralded as like the champion of the real people multi-game solitaire mega tournament or, you know, become some wealthy person because he stepped on the backs of others, that's okay. I think overall the human race is better off with people like Smudge. Smudge slipped out of the shelter one night leaving no note behind. He died while trying to reach his family, having been betrayed by a smuggler. Discard one most valuable token from the storage. Remove this character from the game. So that might have seemed like a jerk move on Smudge's part. I mean, 
here he is, like, I'm the good guy, I'm helping people, please, you have to help these, these kids if anything should happen to me. And then in the night, he slips away, he takes the jewels. And I actually find that makes him a better person, because if he was just doing good stuff all the time, I think Smudge would be a little boring. And so I'm glad Smudge um, showed some personality. He, you know, showed that he's going to help the little guy, but he's also going to help himself. Because, you know, he's a little guy too, and he deserves his, his fair share. And, you know, who knows? Maybe he's taking those jewels to go um, buy those kids more food or something, right? You don't know. You can't judge him. Who are you to judge him? All right, next time.